Hello, America. Welcome to my Wednesday night special, and special indeed it is. I'm just sitting here before we got started, and somebody left this on my desk. This is me on Fox. Remember when I had hair? Anyway, uh, this is me on Fox, and the chalkboard that uh, I had every night on the show. Radicals, Islamists, Communists, Socialists work together against Israel. Check. Work together against capitalism. Check. Work together to overturn stability. Check. Part two. The protests on the street become contagious. They cascade. They finish in the Middle East. They begin to stabilize Europe. And they head on over here for the rest of the world. That was uh, 2011. And that's exactly what is happening right now. Two of the biggest heists in human history are currently underway. And by and large, American politicians are bickering and complaining over bullcrap. The globalist regime is busy right now at work siphoning off the personal wealth of every single American citizen, you and me and everybody, well, maybe not the elites, and America's land and natural resources could be seized right underneath our noses if we don't wake up right now. Now, much of this progresses further than that, believe it or not, beginning this weekend. I'll show it to you later on in the program. But there is one movement in America that is standing in the way of all of this. And the chances are, if you're watching this right now, you are part of that, which is a blockade. The head of that movement, of course, is Donald Trump. Donald Trump, they cannot allow this movement to continue. It can't be done. They can't allow the symbol of this movement, Donald Trump, to keep talking. And as sure as hell, they cannot allow him to win. They have tried everything, smear campaigns, special counsels, indictments, raids on his home, even the incitement of violence. It has been this way now nearly a decade. If you had to be stuck in an elevator with either President Trump, Mike Pence, or Jeff Sessions, who would it be? Does one of us have to come out alive? Chris always asks me, don't I wish I were debating him? No, I wish during in high school I could take him behind the gym. That's what I wish. I said, no, I said, if we were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. Maybe there will be. That you cannot be civil with a political party that wants to destroy what you stand for, what you care about. If you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant... to be unrest in the streets for as long as there's unrest in our lives. Enemies of the state. Crystal Walker, how do you resist the temptation to run up and wring her neck? They go low, we kick. Please, get up in the face of some Congress people. Yes, I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Wow, so Trump released that video yesterday. Words have consequences. Ever since the summer of rage, people have shown a willingness to commit violence, and there has been little to no consequence for the left. And it is no surprise at all where we find ourselves today. This weekend, Donald Trump survived his second assassination attempt. Now, I just want to put this into perspective, if we're keeping score. He now has as many assassination attempts as Kamala Harris has had interviews with the media. Crazy, right? But who needs to actually go out and talk to the American public and media when you have a full-blown influence operation working autonomously for you? Details are, st- uh, are starting to slow, uh, slowly drip out about the failed assassin, and there's much we don't know. But we do know a couple of things. One, he worked inside of Ukraine and outside Uh, He tried to recruit foreign fighters to fight in Ukraine. As per the New York Times, over one year ago, this effort including reaching out to Afghans who had fled the Taliban to places like Pakistan and Iran. Now hang on just a second. How does some roofer, some rando American, just a regular Joe, get to the point where you can even attempt 
something like that? I mean, there's a lot of questions, uh, you know, I have about this attempted assassination. But as usual, the media is directing us to all of the usual talking points. Things like, where did he live? What did the neighbor say? What did he do for a living? Did his family and friends notice anything odd about him? What did he post on social media? Who did he vote for? I'm sorry, uh, did we forget exactly how to be intellectually curious about these kinds of things? Did we forget that the quality of questions actually matter? I don't know about you, but I don't really give a flying crap what he said on Facebook right now. I don't even care who he voted for. He voted for the Democrats, by the way. What I'd like to know is how an assassin that was so sure he was going to be successful that he set up a camera to video the attempted murder knew what the former president's schedule would even be that day. President Trump is in the middle of one of the busiest, most insane and contentious election campaigns in modern history. He is all over the country. But the failed assassin knew that he'd be back at Mar-a-Lago on Sunday and playing golf. Now, I was with the president, uh, President Trump, on Saturday, the day before. I was in a different location halfway across the country. When he left, he said, I'm just going to take the day off tomorrow and go to Mar-a-Lago. Now, up until he personally told me that, I didn't know where he was going. How did the failed assassin know? How did he know that Donald Trump would also suddenly decide spontaneously to head out and play a round of golf? How did he know that Trump would, you know, wouldn't just opt to play the back nine? Somehow he knew that Trump would be at Mar-a-Lago on Sunday. He knew the exact time he would head out for golf and he knew the location. Wow, he's lucky. Has any successful or failed assassin, assassin in the past half century ever set up their attack position based on luck? Did they ever just show up randomly with no prior knowledge that their target would be there? You know, and I just post up here for a few days. Who knows? Dude might, you know, wander into the scope at random. Yeah, it's not like deer hunting usually. It doesn't work that way. So I don't care who he voted for, or what he said on social media right now. I want to know how he knew where he was at that time and that location. I'd also kind of like to know, how come he didn't go to prison after he was convicted, tried and convicted of uh, having a weapon of mass destruction, which would be a fully automatic rifle? And he had other gun charges, too. Where did he get that gun? Did he have it in Hawaii and did he put it on a plane? That's really, I mean, I'm just interested. I don't know about you. If you're willing to ask that one simple question, how did he know, then you can ask a few more. What kind of contacts would a, pr a private citizen need in order to recruit foreign fighters for a lar the largest ground war in Europe since World War II? That's kind of hard. When I helped evacuate Christians and American citizens from Afghanistan, we had to talk to both the military and the State Department. Did he give him a jingle? How do you recruit Afghans out of Pakistan and Iran? How would you get the visas and the passports? How would you get them equipped with weapons? How did you not just show up on everybody's radar? Was he in contact with the State Department? Did the CIA ever talk to him? The Pentagon? How about NGOs? Were they helping? Did they get funding through ASAID? I mean, I've done shows in the past on USAID. Uh, you know, you look at the relationship with the CIA over the past, uh, well, forever. Who was this guy connected to? Who was he dealing with? And did they have any access to the presidential weekly and daily schedule? How about we start there? I mean, we can read about who he voted for and, you know, maybe what he said on social media. Does he, does he like Tyler Perry? Uh, is, is he a Swifty? I, I don't know. There are so many unanswered and unasked questions, and those are two of none of them. What I do know is that Donald Trump stands in the way of a massive, massive global agenda. 
This election is currently being conducted in the middle of a frightening reality. The media and left-wing politicians are trying to obscure that reality. They're trying to get everybody to just focus on orange man bad because it blinds everybody and puts them in their lizard brains. It's unlike anything we have ever faced. It's a psyop. Today's reality is tomorrow's horror show. And the globalist agenda will stop at nothing to make sure we all st stay blindfolded and asleep. What is that reality? Have you seen it? Have your friends and neighbors? I'll show it to you when we come back. All right, let me tell you about Jace Medical. Literally every day we move closer to a potential war with countries like Russia and China. I don't know if you heard, but uh, Vladimir Putin just upped uh, the size of the Russian military. It is now the second largest military in the world, only behind China. Uh, meanwhile, we're kind of falling apart. Uh, that's great. And we're deciding right now whether or not we're going to put long range uh, missiles into Ukraine. What, 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 what are we pausing for? The answer is no. That is an act of war, according to Putin and Russia, and has been since the 1960s. What is wrong with us? We could be at war at any time. We could go to war and China could stop sending us stuff. Do you know they make most of our medications? Yeah, that would be pleasant, won't it? Uh, right now, if you need your medications and you really want to be prepared, go and get a Jace case. It's from Jace Medical, J-A-S-E. It's a personalized emergency kit. It contains the essential antibiotics and medications that treat most common and deadly bacterial infections. It provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. You just fill out a simple form online and you can have it, uh, you know, in case you need it. They also have Tamiflu and Ivermectin and, and a lot of the things that you might need, EpiPens, things that you might take on a daily basis. Please have some supply of these things at hand. Jace, J-A-S-E dot com and enter the promo code Beck at checkout and you'll get a discount on your order. Jace dot com. All right, before I get into what's beginning this weekend, I want to show you the three realities that we're all facing right now. This is the current situation that we're living in, and it will progress if Donald Trump loses in November at tremendous speed. Reality one, the United States currently has no president or a vice president. That's the reality, gang. Oh, they have offices in the White House. They even come up with family photos and you know, little place cards. And, and in terms of uh, autonomous and independent leadership, that doesn't exist. Okay, I've showed you in previous shows on what's happening in all the main Western nations in the world. They are all marching to exactly the same drum. You look at some of the laws that have been passed in the last four years over in Germany and then in France and then here. They're almost word for word. How's that happening? We're all having the same problems. Waves and waves of massive illegal immigration. Fear campaigns that are used to weaponize the government onto their own citizens. The crackdown on free speech and the forced merger of private business with the government through the radical green agenda. Okay. So how did a nation as defiant as the UK go from this? Whatever the cost may be, we shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. Wow. How did they get from that to this? Two years ago, a UK, UK army veteran was arrested for posting a meme now, that meme didn't call for violence. He didn't yell fire in the middle of a crowded theater. But he was arrested because the meme was causing, quote, anxiety. How does that happen? How does a country get to that point? Well, we're not far behind them. As I show you later on the show, you might be surprised who our own puppet in chief is taking briefing from, uh, briefings from and who he's taking pointers from. 
Let me just tease it with, be careful what memes you post. We have no independent leadership in this country anymore. We have agents and representatives of the international order and machine. And that's pretty much it. Well, then you also have the choice of Donald Trump. Robert F. Kennedy, but he's out. I'm also going to show you what the annual United Nations meeting this week reveals about our current reality. What is happening in the shadows is about to become business as usual and fully out in the open. Here's reality too. Zimbabwe. Inflation. You will own nothing and be happy in six years. Your wealth is already dissolving at a breakneck speed, but nobody's really telling you that. The national debt is set to blow past $36 trillion with zero plan to cut the spending. From 2025 through 2034, if everything remains as it is, the U.S. federal deficit will be over $16 trillion. Last week, for the first time in American history, the interest payments on the national debt topped $1 trillion. Do you remember four years ago I did a show on this and everybody was saying it won't happen and I said it's going to happen soon and you're not going to like it when it happens. See, all of this stuff, you haven't felt the real effects of. You know the open borders? You're just starting to see the real effects in Aurora and uh, Springfield, New York, with all of the death, murder, rape, all of that stuff. This is the beginning of it. All of the things that they did three, four years ago, it's all now picking up speed and it's all being, it's all being seen now by you. But don't worry, it's all fine. It's just, it's really, it's all fine. We're lulled to sleep with reporting like this. The recent consumer price index shows, quote, inflation cools to 2.5%. Wow. Core prices, things like food, housing, energy cars, things we actually buy and need, were a bit higher at 3.2. Now, what do you notice about these numbers? 2.5% inflation, 3.2% inflation. I mean, that seems manageable, right? Doesn't seem, I mean, it seems almost normal, doesn't it? We can deal with that. 2.5%, 3, 3.2%, you know, trust in the system and we'll all be okay. The government can keep spending and we can keep swiping the credit cards. Let me take you to the chalkboard for a second and show you something the government never wants you to see and nobody in the mainstream media will ever explain it this way. Here's the inflation. We've all been hearing for four years now that there's nothing wrong with the national debt, the deficit, and inflation. It's fine. Bidenomics, Bidenomics. The Fed has a plan. Everything is actually okay, and prices are coming down, or at least rising at a slower rate. But is that actually how you feel when you go to the grocery store? When you pay your energy bill? When you look at your new insurance bill? You fill up the gas tank. Do you feel like, ah, it's fine. Bidenomics is working. Let me show you the reason for the disparity and also how the government is pulling off their little magic trick. Let me show you this part of the chalkboard. I'm going to start here. It reflects the consumer price index uh, from 23 to the end of 2024. This is the average cost of goods that we pay to support our family with things like clothes, cars, gas, energy bills, 3.2 to 2.5. You can see that there is a gradual increase from last year, but then boom, right at the tail end of 2024, like right now, during the election, isn't that weird? You can see that cooling uh, comes down. Wow, it doesn't, it, it's working. Binomics is working. That's really not that big of a, of a change. I mean, how, I mean, if this is where we were, how come, why, why is it so hard to make ends meet? Why are credit cards all maxed to the limit? While we're arguing over the numbers like 2.5 and 3.2 month to month, let me show you the actual chart. See, that was just one year. Let me take you all the way back to 1950. This is 1950. Here's 2020. This is Trump. And this is the inflation that we had from uh, Biden and Harris. The government wants you to uh, focus on this, okay? 
But let me just show you this, this right here. That is this. Okay. I don't know if you can zoom in enough, but that is the slide down. It's that big. Okay. This is where the discussion should be. This is where it should be, 20 to 2024. But they want you to focus on this big drop. No, no, no. This chasm from 20 to 24 is where the analysis should be. This is why we're all going bankrupt right now. And it's not a small percentage change from here to here. See. You remember when Trump was in office and our prices were here. And look at what has happened. Now, let me give you reality number three. Zimbabwe. Again, Zimbabwe, but also China and the former Soviet Union. Zimbabwe, China, the Soviet Union all did exactly the same thing. They began seizing farmland manipulating how food production operated and killed massive amounts of people by doing it. Oh, and they also tanked their economies. Our international overlords with their surrogates in the U.S. White House are doing the uh, same thing. We're right in the middle of the same thing. Have you ever heard of the 30 by 30 agenda? I know it's a conspiracy theory. It's not happening. Mm, really? Well, the United Nations thinks it is. Uh, every Western country is implementing it. Have you ever looked into the developments with the Sustains Act? The theft of American land, resources, and assets is now fully underway, and much of it progresses over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to take you there next. Hey, if you or somebody you know is living with aches and pains in your life, let me ask you a question. What's your response to it? Do you do your best to ignore it? I know you've probably gone to see all the doctors. You've tried all kinds of different things. If you have found anything to get you out of pain, usually it just masks it. Ibuprofen never worked for me, and I didn't think Relief Factor would work for me because it's like ibuprofen, isn't it? It reduces the inflammation. Woo, that doesn't work. Let me tell you about Relief Factor. It's a daily 100% drug-free supplement that just doesn't mask your pain for a short time. It actually works with your body every day, all day, to eliminate inflammation from your body, which causes our pain and most of our problems, for good. It uses a unique formula of natural ingredients to support your body's response to inflammation. Over a million people have tried Relief Factor. 70% of them have gone on to order more. I'm one of them. Give Relief Factor a try with their three-week quick start. It's only $19.95. That's less than a dollar a day. Try it and see how it can help turn back the clock on pain for you. Visit relieffactor.com. 800, the number four, relief. 800, four, relief. Relieffactor.com. I want to talk to you, before we get into this, a little bit about um, lies. And uh, I just want to take you through uh, what we have seen, and we now can verify all of these things. Let's start with just COVID. First, the Democrats said, if Trump comes up with a cure for COVID, I won't take it. And it was celebrated. It was on news and everything else. They won't take it. Okay. I, I wouldn't have taken it either, and, because I didn't trust anybody doing uh, that with mRNA. Uh, turns out that was good, good thinking there. But first they said they wouldn't take it if Trump did. Then, after Big Pharma, remember, said we don't have anything in the pipeline until the election was over. The very next day, Big Pharma came out and said, there's a vaccine. Hmm. And now it became the Biden vaccine. Now you had to take it. Anybody who didn't want to take it, like I wouldn't have taken it under Trump. I didn't want to take it under Biden. But now you're a grandma killer. Okay, you had to take it and you had to keep getting the boosters. They're still schlepping this stuff. And we've seen exactly what that does. We've seen now the results. We have seen, remember when you couldn't talk about how come all these young people are dying with heart problems? 
That's new. No, it's not. It's always happened that way. It's always happening. This isn't what you're looking for. These are not the droids you're looking for. Are you kidding me? So we couldn't ask any questions. Okay. Then we couldn't question, we couldn't even read the bills that were being passed. How much was the last one? Seven trillion dollars, some crazy amount of money. And all Western com- countries are doing exactly the same thing. They're overspending. They are passing, in many, t- in many cases, word for word, the same kind of bills. Uh, and all coming from the Economic Forum and the, and the UN. All Western countries are doing the same thing that we're doing with immigration. We're just slightly behind them because we have a constitution. But uh, did you know in the American Recovery Act, uh, all of these, all of the money to pay for those hotels through NGOs, that was all taken care of. You notice nobody said who's paying for We just assumed the city was paying for those hotels. No, no, the cities aren't. You are in your taxpayer dollars, in the American Recovery Act, which was passed in 2021. This was, this, what's happening right now is not a bug, it's a feature. Now we can't, we couldn't question Biden's senility. How dare you even ask that question? Now we can't ask Kamala, when did you know? How come you didn't tell us before? And we also can't question war. Have you seen what's happening with war? We are on the eve of war, and nobody's really talking about it. The elites are making the decisions on everything, and you can't question it. We need to turn this around, gang. We need to start asking questions because this is my life. This is your life. This is the life of your children, your family. This is the life of all of the free people all in the free world. And I don't trust anybody. In 1935, Ernest Hemingway said in an article that was published Uh, in Esquire magazine, and he said, if I might quote, the first panacea of mismanaged nation is inflation of the currency. The second is war. Both will bring temporary, uh, temporary prosperity. Both bring permanent ruin. Both are the refuge of political and economic opportunities. End quote. Inflation a major war, and a pandemic. Wow, sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? And man, oh man, are the opportunists circling the waters. And one of the biggest wacko globalists on the planet is Bill Gates. Last week, he said that the world is currently facing a major war or another pandemic in less than 30 years. Yeah, 30 minutes probably closer. He said America failed to lead during COVID, but... There were lessons learned. Hmm. I wonder what those lessons are. That Americans can be ordered to stay indoors? To close their business down? To be injected with experimental vaccines? To shame others into silence? That they'll be silent when they're told, you can't go to church anymore? That they will have to shut up, allow censorship, and believe only what the government tells them is true or not true? You mean, Bill, those lessons? Man, less than 30 years, if only the world would do something. I told you about this a few months ago, but it is here now. This weekend, leaders from every major country in the world are beginning to gather at the United Nations annual meeting in New York. This year's meeting has been named the Summit of the Future. And it includes an agenda item called Our Common Agenda. Now, this is the solution for everything Bill Gates was fanatically warning about last week. What if another war breaks out? Or the Russia-Ukraine war escalates? What happens if there's another pandemic? What happens if the global inflation crisis spirals further out of control? Well, our common agenda is here, which begins debate this week in New York City. It is the globalist plan of action. If it pass, if it should pass, you are looking at a global government. This year's UN summit and the radical agenda are all about the same thing. And they state it on their website, quote, transforming global governance. That doesn't sound good. This document, our common agenda, isn't some random and boring policy paper or speech. This is a platform 
And the only one voting for this are the UN members, not you. To be more specific, it's a emergency platform. Let me quote from it. The emergency platform would not be a standing body or entity, but a set of protocols that could be activated when needed. This new emergency platform could be activated for nearly anything, including climate events, economic, pandemic, wars, black swan type of surprises. National sovereignty doesn't seem to be a concern here, and this new platform could be enacted completely at the whim of the UN Secretary General. The UN's agenda over the next couple of weeks has gone through multiple revisions over the past few months, including this 17-page document that addresses technology, communications, and artificial intelligence specifically. I'll have this document up at glenbeck.com after the show. Read through it very carefully. This is a real threat. It is nothing short of a call for media companies to censor wrong think and for AI to progress according to their agenda. And it is all cloaked in a bunch of human rights jargon, but it is really just a sales pitch to direct speech and technology advancement guided by the globalists for the next six years. Censorship is about to become a global government mandate. Uh, That much, we know, and much of the Western world is already on board. Earlier in the show, I showed you some of the things the UK was doing. Want to take a guess at which Western government is looking to copy what they're doing? Documents were leaked last week that show the Biden administration was getting detailed presentations from the UK government on how to censor their own people. A meeting was attended by the Biden White House, the National Security Council, and the Office of Director of National Intelligence, the CIA, FBI, the Department of State, Treasury, Defense, Homeland Security, HHS, USAID, and multiple high-ranking officers in the Army, Navy, and Air Force. It seems kind of like an important meeting, one we should have heard about, and it seems like they're serious. The UN's will is getting done regardless of how the vote goes in the next couple of weeks. It is already happening, and our own government is learning how. But it goes much further. The UN has proposed something called the 30 by 30 Agenda. You really need to read up. We are six years away from this. On this document, as well, in essence, the globalist, uh, the globalists of the world have a plan to seize 30% of all land on planet Earth and all water. The words private property will not matter. They do not matter to these people. But as ludicrous as that sounds, you need to learn about this because it is spreading everywhere. The European Union is implementing it as we speak. This is not a conspiracy theory. It is happening now. California, by the way, is using the exact same language. And Joe Biden's first salvo of executive orders mentions conserving 30% of our lands and waters by 2030. Now, you might be wondering, what's with the arbitrary number of 30%? How How would they know that's beneficial to the planet? Well... This isn't about uh, um, uh, conservation. It's about taking. Taking. Now the question is, how do you do that in the United States? Well, you do it through something called the Sustains Act, which was signed into law as part of the Consolidated Appropriations Act last year. You know that omnibus that we always have to rush through? It allows the government to receive private funds to advance conservation programs. Kind of sounds like the seizing of American assets, even privately owned, just became one of the biggest public-private partnerships in human history. The Sustains Act looks to assign environmental services that are provided on privately owned land. Now, what are environmental services? Well, they could assign whatever they want from your land. Does your property contribute to pollination? Photosynthesis. Does your property have a lot of trees so it affects the air that we breathe? The water that we drink? Other health-type benefits. 
It's all being monetized through a relationship between private investors like Bill Gates and the government. And it all occurs without the landowner. This is already U.S. law. This is the seizing of America's real assets without the consent of the people that actually own the land. And it's all being done in line with the goals of the international organization like the United Nations 30 by 30. Did you vote for it? Were you ever explained what this was? Did anybody ask for your opinion? Of course not. You hired representatives. And according to the World Economic Forum, that was your part. So now the representatives take it from here. They don't have to ask you anymore. A lot of these documents and plans from organizations like the UN read like stereo instructions written in Korean. Luckily, I have a human decoder. <sighs> Justin Haskins is a guy I met years ago. He was very young and he started StopSocialism.com. I don't even know if it's a website anymore. And he was passionate about stopping socialism. This is, what, this is back in, you know, when I was doing these chalkboards. And, uh, and everybody was like, socialist, that's a crazy communist, that'll never happen. Mm -hmm. Well, he saw it and he knew, and so I've been following him for years. He's now at the Heartland Institute. He is the co-author of two of my New York Times best-selling books. We're releasing another one on propaganda here in a few weeks. But he was in the studios uh, just last week, and he spoke to me to help you understand and figure all of this out. It's vital information, and it's next. You know, don't you wish that we were, don't you wish that we were living at the time when you could trust companies and you could, you just, you may not even have known your neighbor, but you knew they were decent people somehow or another. I mean, sure, there was the serial killer down the street at some point, but you could generally trust that people believed the kind of the same things. We didn't go to the same church. Some of us didn't go to church, whatever, but we all believed the same thing, and we were working towards a better America because we agreed on the Bill of Rights. Well, we don't anymore. The New York Times came out with an editorial, and this is like their fifth editorial on this, that the Constitution is outdated and needs to go away. Hmm. Okay, I don't want to work with those people. If you switch to Patriot Mobile right now, you'll be sending the message that you support free speech, religious freedom, the sanctity of life, the Second Amendment, our military, our veterans, our first responders. Their 100% U.S.-based customer service team makes switching really easy. You can keep your number. You can keep your phone. You can upgrade. The team will help you find the best plans for your needs. You're not going to lose any coverage because they're on the same cell towers, same coverage that you've always had with the big three but you're not sending the money to some company that is working to destroy us. Please, we're running out of time. They could use your help so they can help us and you. PatriotMobile.com slash Beck. Call, you'll get a free month of service if you just call them at 972-PATRIOT right now. You'll save money and get a full month free. It's PatriotMobile.com slash Beck. 972 Patriot. It's weird, Justin, that we are sitting here talking about the summit of the future, which is really creepy sounding, um, and they're packed for the future. We have been following things like our common agenda, Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, and we're here now. I mean, this is, these are the last pieces to put in place to turn on a global governance machine, isn't it? Yeah, the, there's no question about that whatsoever. We've been warning about this. Well, you've been warning about this for many, many years, yeah. going way back. We've really ramped things up since we started talking about the Great Reset in 2020. Um, and the other side has as well. They've, they've pushed the, their, the, their foot on the accelerator. They're going as fast as they possibly can it's now. It's Trump, isn't it? 
It's of course it's Trump. That's I think there was a very clear plan that they were slowly moving towards this exact model for the future. Mm -hmm. Barack Obama, uh, they thought they were in great shape. They thought they had turned the corner. They believed Hillary Clinton was easily going to win and it was going to be 16 straight years of slow movement. And then you had Donald Trump, the hand grenade in the room. Screw it all up. Screwed the whole thing up. And yeah. now they're not taking any chances. So, okay, so let's talk about the pact for the future. Because there's three, there's three votes that are happening. By the way, I was just invited to attend oh. and be there in the room I'm so at jealous. the UN. Oh my gosh, I don't know if I can handle all the evil. <laughs> um, but this is a big, yeah. This is a big, big, big deal. Yes. Tell me about the three packs. So uh, there are three international agreements that are going to be voted upon. One is called Pact for the Future. Uh, all of them come from our common agenda, which is something we've been talking about for the past two or three years. But, uh, but what's so crazy? No one on earth outside of the elites have talked about it. No, and I don't think it's a mistake that they scheduled all of this to happen just a couple months before the election. Mm -hmm. That's not a mistake. They mm -hmm. want to get this in at the last moment. So Pack for the Future, I think this is the, the worst of the three potentially. Um, essentially what it does is it, it includes all sorts of vague socialistic language, things like that. Um, but then there are some things in there that are really troubling. Uh, member states under this agreement would say that they're going to put policies into place to have ESG social credit scoring in banking so that they can impose uh, left-wing values through the financial system. Um, there's a promise for member states to have universal access to sexual and reproductive health for women. Oh my gosh. And then they cite these other two agreements, one of which very specifically defines that as including abortion. Uh, so that's part of this. Um, uh, probably the most uh, insane part of it is a call for what they're calling an emergency platform. Uh, an emergency platform is something that the UN Secretary General asked for as part of our common agenda. What, what is an emergency platform? What it is, is essentially giving the UN Secretary General in the event of a quote unquote global shock, which he gets to define unilaterally, uh, all sorts of vague powers to deal with the ramifications of the shock, no matter where it is in the so world. Here's my, here's my theory lately, is they're putting all these things in, but Americans, if that ever happened, Americans would not follow. But America will be so poor, so dismantled, that it won't be able to stand up for itself. And these guys will have a global army that will fight for that. And so, I mean, Boeing will be out. They've destroyed everything yeah. or are in the midst of destroying it right now. Right. I mean, this is so well played and oh. so planned. Yeah, w without a question, uh, without a doubt. And, and the uh, emergency platform, what makes this really crazy is um, they, he would be able to institute this on his own, define what a global shock is essentially on his own, according to his own report, his own request to the, to the United Nations. Uh, and then there would be a finite period of time where this global shock would need to be dealt with. And penalties could be issued to countries that are not compliant. Yeah. But then at the end of that finite period, he gets to unilaterally decide whether to renew the period over and over and over again. So it's, it's as though we're voting on, a, on an emperor, essentially, is what's going on here. Um, it's absolutely incredible. And, so, and this is just one of the three agreements. Um, there's, three, there's two others that they're looking at. One is the Declaration on Future Generations, which has all this yeah, crazy, uh, they're creating a new office, essentially, uh, that's responsible for trying to get young people more involved in the United Nations and stuff like that. That's terrifying. Vague promises about battling climate change and member states making commitments to- They don't build a, an, a separate office and then not have big, of big plans. Yeah, uh, my favorite- it sounds vague, but yeah, they well, know what it's for. Without a doubt. And my, one of my favorite promises in it is, quote, Eliminate all forms of persistent historical and structural inequalities, including by acknowledging, addressing, and remedying past tragedies and their consequences. Oh my gosh. 
which of course is a catch-all to do anything. Anything. Yeah, anything to anybody at, all. at any time. Exactly. Give me the last one. So the last one is the Global Digital Compact. Um, this one is, I think, in the long run, the most dangerous. Uh, essentially what it would do is create, um, try to elevate the United Nations to be the global regulator of emerging technologies, especially artificial intelligence. Oh my gosh. With the idea being that we need to embed left-wing social values into artificial intelligence to make sure that it's not promoting hate speech or you know uh, uh -huh, opposing whatever. social yeah. justice, whatever it is, right? Uh, that's a huge part of it. They also have all of these uh, propaganda um, protocols and mechanisms that are in it. For example, um, there's a, a, a commitment in here to say strengthening independent and public media, public media, uh, and supporting journalists and media workers. They're talking about financially. So you're talking about getting money from the United Nations to say the things the United Nations wants you to say. Provide, promote, and facilitate access to and dissemination of independent, fact-based, timely, targeted, clear, accessible, multi lingual and science-based information to counter mis- and disinformation. They want to have a, a, a group within the United Nations that is going to be responsible for deciding what is misinformation and what well, isn't. It worked out so well with Goebbels. Oh, it, what, how about the WHO and yeah. COVID-19? That I wasn't know. even that long I ago. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Um, and most of the Global Digital Compact is about AI. And how do we design AI to make sure that it's you know, on our side, promoting our values, is working for everyone in their minds. I have to tell you, I've had a change inside of me to where this has always been personal for me. It's always been visceral, um, but it is, it's changed because it's happening right now. It's always been Agenda 2030. Right. This is happening right now. And I have to tell you, I think we're entering the realm of the Antichrist. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that the Antichrist would use to control the globe. Yeah. It's it, absolutely stunning. And it, you know, when you have, as you said, Agenda 2030 and it's 10 years off into the future and you think we've got 10 years to deal with this problem. But when they're talking about rolling out these things right now to make sure that by 2030, they talk about Agenda 2030 a lot in all these documents. Yeah. That's the, the whole purpose of this, yeah. to make sure that happens. Uh, all this crazy socialistic language and everything else. I think the one thing that has kept them from being successful ultimately has been the United States. They, the United States has always been the pushback on this stuff, going back decades and decades and decades. But those days have essentially ended and, and if Donald Trump is not president of the United States... Can we get out of it? I've got such, such short time. Can we get out of this if Donald Trump is elected? Only if he aggressively pushes back against it. That's the only way. He has to. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, Glenn.